Anyang SAO, welcome to Afternoon of Delight, where Leah, Megan, and Amy, romance novelists and your K Romance guides. So grab some deck bokey and listen to your new favorite unease. So today it is Sarah and myself, Leah, because we are going to be talking about a drama that I really enjoy. Sarah just watched and has very big feelings about the <laughs> Megan. And Amy have not watched it, nor do they seem particularly inclined to do so to my like sadness. So I'm excited that we can talk about this. And I think it is a drama that you've either watched and you have a feeling about, or you haven't watched and you're like, what's the fuss about? Because I've heard about it so much, right? So yes, so this, and I can I just say like other longtime fans of this pod, I think we all know how much Leah loves this drama. And we also know that Megan and Amy are not big fans of historical drama. So like, I was not sure if they would even ever come to watch this drama and we would ever get to hear Leah's actual thoughts on this. So I'm really, really happy we're finally getting a pod on this drama because I'm genuinely just really excited to hear what Leah loves about <laughs> I hope it lives up to your expectations because well this is yeah well I want to unpack it but I'm also kind of nervous like Meg I feel like Megan and Amy when they watched Mr Sunshine and Reply 1998 which we also know are Leah's other great loves and I was like am I gonna love it as much as she did and if I didn't (laughs) is she still gonna be my friend like with me look okay (laughs) so let's get to what we're talking about today today we were talking about moon lovers and then it's Scarlet Heart Ryo, Ryo, Ryo. <laughs> no idea, right? Because it never comes up in the drama. Never. No idea why Scarlet Heart Rio or Ryo is even a thing. But it's got some heavy hitting cast. So we've got Lee Jung Gi. We have Kong Han Nul. We have IU. We have uh, Nam Ju Hyuk. We have Ji Su, who is. We'll get to G2. Um, now we have Beck Hyun. Like there are many famous people in this drama. Many, many. So people. many. So many. Um, so I'm just going to give a very quick, I'm going to read the blurb that comes up when you Google it, because I think we're going to talk about that a bit throughout too. But how we normally do this is we talk about a drama as kind of like non-spoiler, and then we'll get into a, like a clearly defined spoiler section. So, so yeah, so like 30,000 foot view of this drama is that Ha Jin travels a thousand years back in time and lands in the era of the Goryeo dynasty, kind of at the beginning, like kind of at the very beginning of it. The first king is in power. And um, she arrives in the body of a young girl named Hei Su, um, who had been like living her life you know, presumably <laughs> in this time. So Hajin is now trapped in another person's body and she becomes involved in a power struggle against various vicious contenders to the throne. So, you know, we have formed a long distance friendship and I feel like, you know, we often do see eye to eye in our dramas and we often like historicals too, which is yes. nice because, you know, Megan and Amy don't like historical so much they particularly don't like power struggles for the throne which is why I never pushed moon lovers that hard because that is the drama (laughs) Um, but today I do know that we have disagreements on like how much we enjoyed it but this isn't the first time that we've disagreed on a drama and you let me know this (laughs) because you (laughs) go back after you watched Itawan class which was a controversial drama for the pod I felt like it was a strong romance and I had, I had not decided not to watch it because Megan had poo-pooed it so much. Yeah. yeah. And I had another trusted friend who was like, uh, look, I think it's really good. And so I kind of put it on like, okay, I'm going to give it a chance at some point. And last summer I watched it was like, what the hell? Like, I love this Megan, what is wrong with you? And I loved <laughs> it so much that I convinced Amy to watch it and happily because it's always nice when someone validates you. Oh she, yeah with me not Megan and also (laughs) loved it and thought it had a great romance however you agree with Megan that it was like yeah I mean actually it's good you brought that up because as a listener I love the podcast where you guys don't agree so they're like fun because it always makes for an interesting discussion um and then also you feel like one of the hosts at least represents your feels so I remember I was with you on Mr. Queen and I was Mm -hmm. still shocked 
I was so shocked, but I'm still shocked that Megan and Amy fast forwarded bits of that drama. Like, like wow. But then I remember on Cafe Minim Dong, I watched it live dropping like Amy did, and she mm-hmm. really liked it, and I really liked it, and you hated it. But yeah, it. it's a yeah. class. I was team Megan on this, and I don't want to spoil it for anyone. So she she raised all the issues that I had with it. Um, and if you guys haven't watched Ito One Class, watch it. And then watch, listen to the pod because it's uh, absolutely one of my favorites. And it also has Megan's really amazing I Climbed a Mountain and Nearly Died story, which was. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to listen to that podcast if you haven't already. Um, and I remember Amy saying in our Patreon chat about this later that what she found really interesting was that It's Around Class was such a black and white drama in that way. So you either came out of it loving it, like you and Amy did, or you came out of it with some reservations like me and Megan. It was just like either or. And yes. I think Moon Lovers is going to be one of those dramas as well. So you either come out of it absolutely loving it, like you, or you come out of it thinking, okay, I don't think I quite understand what I've just watched. Um, and, and, you know, and that's cool too. So I think that's what we're going to have on this podcast. Yes. And I think it's fun. And I personally like it when people have differing opinions. I think it makes for a more robust discussion. So, okay. First, this is a hard ass drama to watch, like too hard to watch because everyone talks about it. And then you're like, I can't find it anywhere. Yeah. (laughs) So for me, this is probably one of the only dramas I've ever watched on drama. Cool. I try to tend to stay away from drama. Cool. But I was so curious and I'm such a sucker for a dude in a mask. Like I have a some of the opera thing that goes back to like being eight or so. And I was like, I got to find a way to watch this. I watched on drama cool. The first time I watched it, I don't even know. I was watching such a bad version that half the time it was just lips. Like maybe like 10% of the time it was just lips moving. Oh like with <laughs> And I still powered through it and was like, liked it enough. And then last summer I watched it. Um, when I was in Australia and I was visiting with a friend, I have very few friends in real life who like dramas and she does. And she's like my friend who's a huge Descendants of the Sun fangirl. And we actually did a short pod on like how much she loves Descendants of the Sun. And I was like, look, I just love Moon Lovers. And I somehow convinced her to give it a go. And we found a version to watch. And we watched it like, we watched it in three nights. (laughs) Oh it's God. a long drama. It's like what it's 20, 20 episodes? episodes. Yeah, we didn't see one hour episodes. We didn't sleep. We were crying. It was amazing. And my oh arm, my both God. of our husbands were like, I don't even know, but at least you're in it together. <laughs> um, and then how about you? Because you found a much better option to watch it. I did, I did. So unfortunately, I don't think it's available in the States, but you guys maybe have a try and see. But it's the H i tv app and it's available on android and on iphone um so i know it definitely works in europe because i've been chatting to um, friends i know it doesn't work in mexico um but for those who can get it it's it's seriously it's so awesome because it's got a lot of the dramas that i can't find on uk netflix or vicky like love or play chicago typewriter queen and hun's men like quite a lot of dramas i really want to watch so I really recommend downloading it. The other way I was going to watch it before I found this app was I was going to use my VPN and VPN from Singapore server and go on to VIEW, which is V-I-U app, which also has it, but it's um yeah usually locked regionally for Asia, that app. But it's got Moon Lovers with good subtitles on that app too. Okay, yeah. I think that's well worth trying. Try the VPN. Yes, This, but it's just... I feel like it's such an iconic drama and I know there's some sort of like BS licensing reason why it's like not on Vicky or Netflix, but. It's such an old drama as well. I don't, I don't get it. So it's on Korean Netflix because I just, for the kicks, I loaded it up when I was in Seoul, um, but obviously it doesn't have any English subtitles. So I was like, well, you know. Oh, that's interesting. So there was no subtitles with it when you were in, okay. Yeah. So obviously there are subtitles for all the modern dramas, but like that one was Korean only. There were no English subtitles. And I like, I mean, this feels very much like how the romance writing world works when we're like, oh, this book is so old. We're like, oh, this drama is so old. It came out in 2016. It's not <laughs> old, but it's like in drama land or romance land. Like these are short shelf lives sometimes, but that's where it's not such staying power. It's been talked about for so quote unquote yes. long. Yeah. Is why, you know, we got to get into it. Okay. So 
just really quickly, um, let's say that you wanted to give somebody who hasn't seen this movie or this drama, like a comp. And to me, I think a good comp is kind of focusing in on the idea of a mean guy who secretly has a heart of gold, sort of. Yeah. Definitely a secondary character. Yes. Um, so what would you give as a comp for that? So actually, it's funny because I came out of this on the back of my obsession with love between fairy and devil. And anyone who's been following me on Instagram or is with us on the Patreon chat knows that I have been absolutely obsessed by this drama. And I've had this crazy hangover for this drama. But the comp for me is in the hero. So he's this hero. Basically, the hero is the titular devil, right? He's the demon lord. He's and he is just the baddest of bad guys across three rounds and I love him so much yeah I love him so much he is just everything in this drama he's the reason why if you do get obsessed he's the reason why Um, and he's raised whole tribes he spends the first part of the drama trying to work out how he's going to kill the heroine he's like he's not a good guy Um, but he's also the hero that says you're mine you're my woman. No one will touch you. You're not leaving me for reasons which the drama will go into. But but and, and obviously we caveat that this is absolutely problematic in real life and you should not be with a guy that goes around talking to you like this. But uh, this is obviously historical fantasy. And when he says this and when Lee Jung Gi says similar words in Moon Lovers, it just mm-hmm. makes my heart skip. I melt a little and I get swoony. It's properly deep fantasy butter yeah it's just like jumping in a vat of <laughs> alpha butter and you're just like yes dominate me and own me <laughs> daddy it's so this it's so this <laughs> um, so, uh, i think it's interesting you watched it coming off the back of that because i watched that too and i'm still in a hangover and so i am curious how much that like affected it too because well, ooh, that's a hard role like I, nothing has felt great after I've been watching Thai BL just because it's so different that I'm like yeah. at least enjoy it because it's so different oh so this so I came up with so my logic on this right was I was I had such a bad hangover and I had such big feels from love between fairy and devil I was like right I need an epic romance that's gonna twist my heart give me feel and I thought you know I started now is the good time to finally watch moon lovers And so, yeah, I absolutely came into this probably with really big expectations and it has huge shoes to fill. And I did wonder while I was watching it, if maybe I hadn't come out of like the best drama for me of 2022, would I have felt differently about this? But actually I've been preparing the script for it today and I'm come to the conclusion. Yeah. I really wouldn't because there's just too much what the fuckery going on with this drama (laughs) that um, that I think my my feels about it would have still stayed the same. So, yeah. so for so me, would you say would you say that um, love between fairy and devil is a comp though? It, I think it is a comp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it is. I mean, I think it's kind of because it has a little bit of of body swap in it. I mean, it has every historical fantasy trope that you might ever want in a drama in that drama. But at the heart of it, it does have this hero who is bad because. Because the thing is with this drama is that you know in a in another world in older historical dramas the main lead guy would not have got the girl in either of these two dramas, right? It would have been like the good guy, like the the good lead, mm-hmm. lead the one that is more saintly and patient and and he would have won and the demon guy would have been like, you know, I love you, um, but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't ever going to get the girl. Um, mm-hmm. This is kind of flipped, right? And I think that's that's why it also makes a good comp. Yeah. I agree. And then even though it's not related very much at all, nor does it have like the heart of gold or any of those things. Um, I do think that flower of evil, I just think Legion Gi is a delight to watch oh, and God, yeah. if anything else I've watched, I've enjoyed flower of evil. And so I'm just going to throw it out there that if you haven't seen flower of evil and you do love Legion Gi, watch it because he's, I mean, he's great in everything, but I particularly enjoyed him in these two roles. Yeah. So um, I, okay. I wrote yeah. a question. <laughs> yeah, no, so you, would, you had some very good questions. So I would call this a head part drama. Like for me, there are so many what the fucks in this drama that they just screw with your head. And you either just go, do you know what? I love it and I'm going to go with it. Or I think it messes with your head so much that you just can't deal with it. 
Mm-hmm. I think that's fair. Yes. And I would say that this is so often when things mess with my head, I tend to not like it at all. And so I like people who have listened to the pod for a long time have seen me nitpick certain things where like I can be pedantic. So then like, am I a hypocrite for them being like, it's fine. Look, I think it comes down to, we all have like the butter that we really love, right? Like we have the fantasies and we have the tropes that really work for us. And so normally, for example, and we're going to get into this later, I, a drama will be ruined for me if I feel like the heroine is too much of a water bottle yeah. and um, how we've defined water bottle hero heroines in the past are there's just like nothing there. Like there's no depth, there's no color. Like it's just like having a bottle of water basically to stand there to be some sort of a standing character. And so as much as I enjoyed like the antagonism that happens in airs, I felt like the heroine in that felt like such a water bottle that I was like, meh, kind of to the drama. IU and this, I like IU. I think IU is great, but like the character as written is one of the biggest water bottle characters of all time. And I don't give a shit. And I am willing to just say, I don't care because just like, I guess, insert me. I like, this is a time where I was like, fine, take the water bottle. I'll guzzle it down. Now I'm in the place somehow like mentally because I have a thing for love triangles. I really like love triangles. I really like super painful love triangles where there's a lot of suffering. I love edging of any kind. So I realized in watching K-dramas that I am an emotional edger. And so when you're just kind of like taking you up to the point and you're watching suffering and things are kind of like creeping along and there's just a lot of like feels under the surface and there's a lot of just kind of that just like that whole edging experience I feel like I was edged almost throughout the whole drama (laughs) with this basically (laughs) so I loved that I truly loved the brothers I loved it better the second watch with the brothers in fact I love the whole drama better on a second watch which is surprising because other dramas often I'll rewatch it and be like, I like it. It just didn't have the magic. I enjoy, I mean, granted, I the first time I saw it in such a bad way, like with like just mouth. <laughs> you, yeah, you but, actually heard some dialogue the second time. <laughs> but well, I mean, I could hear it. It was just like you can always see everything going along with it. Um, but I really enjoyed the brothers. I um enjoy like the band of brothers is always kind of like catnip for me. Um, I love the poor little rich boy trope so much. This has like two poor little boy, rich boys, basically. (laughs) Um, I love suffering in silence. So it just like hit a lot of the things that I just love so much and the things that I love so much. I think it hit very well in those points that I was able to be like, whatever, like, is it my favorite drama? No, it could have been like, it could have been if we'd had like a heroine who didn't suck and like a few (laughs) other what, I mean, I would have even stood up for most of the other what the fucks, honestly. But <laughs> I just felt like I don't ever subscribe to the idea of like a guilty pleasure, like, because, you know, like pleasures are never guilty. But if I was yeah. ever going to say there's like a guilty pleasure love drama for me, I honestly feel like I could watch this once a year forever and be totally happy. And it's one of the only dramas I could do that with. Wow. Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think I think for me, I'm like, so that I'm the opposite as we've kind of like defined. So I, I think we would exceed the nine what the fucks of nine tail. <laughs> <laughs> and I can and I can do what the fucks. Like I I have plenty in little women just like you guys did, and I still came out loving that drama. But this for me had so many what the fuck moments, and it's so disjointed. It kept taking me out of the drama and mm-hmm. then have feels that were building up. And then they just cut to some other completely different topic and they'd leave this other kind of thread that we're running with and it just ended up annoying my brain. And then my head took over and then that was it. I was just emotionally not invested in this drama by the end. And I'm really sad about that. I honestly, I wanted to love this drama so much. I get it. And I totally respect it though, because like it is a mess. Like every time like you would write me and be like, what the f-? I'd be like, I know, I don't know. I mean, it's a mess. So for me, I just love it despite it being a mess. I would have loved it more. Like I said, it's definitely in my top 10. No question. Is it in my top five? I don't know. I'd have to really sit down and like have a big lay down and think about it. Probably not. Definitely top 10. 
Um, yeah. And one of my favorite romance romances, even though it's not even really romance, I just love the two dudes. I love, I love actually like four of the brothers so much that like, I don't know. I That's just hold cool. past everything else. Yeah. But I also think you're right. And I want people listening at home to know that you are right. <laughs> I won't argue actually. So I'm probably being nicer to you than I would be like, you know, when Amy and Megan, like Mr. Queen thought it wasn't a romance. It is a mess. It is a mess. And it has so many plot holes and so many like WTF moments and like takes you out of things. It doesn't explain huge things that are important. <laughs> and I just yeah. don't care. You don't care. Like, yeah. only dramas that I'm fine to not care with because the things that I love, I love so much that I yeah. just enjoy. Um, okay. So what would you say the moral of the Moon Lover story is in one sentence? Um don't be a sad sack of a heroine. <laughs> but seriously, actually, though, this I had a hard time answering this question because this is partly my problem with this drama. Like, I don't know what it's trying to say. Like, what is its core message? I waded through 20 episodes and I'm not sure. And I did for Ite One class, right? I didn't love it, but I liked it and I knew what this message was, but not this one. And if I'm forced, I would say happiness is fleeting. Enjoy it whilst you can. Otherwise, what will happen to you is you'll have the happiest moments of your entire life and then you'll die whilst watching a flashback of all the best parts of your life play out in a montage just before you draw your own, your last breath. That would be my moral of the story. Fair. I mean, also a bit of like the heavy is the head that wears the crown. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah know, there is a lot of that. You know, there is a bit on like the corruption of power. And what happens also if your sister really wants to fuck you, like watch out because bad things could happen. <laughs> okay, so we're in the non-spoiler section. I apologize. So okay, what would you say in the non-spoiler way, even though I gave us no no context spoiler? Um, what are the best and worst aspects of the show? And then so, ultimately, would you recommend it? So for me, hands down, Lee Jung-gi. So I think it's kind of, kind of clear by now that I, I didn't really feel this drama a lot, but I would still absolutely recommend that you watch it because you need to see which side of the line you fall, right? Is it head? Is it heart? Are you kind of come out of this going like, oh my God, I love this drama like Leah has been? Or are you going to come out of this going like, oh my God, what the fuck is this drama? That's me. Um, but for the second reason, and actually like the third, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth reason, Lee jong gi So um, I think we do more first for Lee jong gi later. But specifically, Lee jong gi telling you with his beautiful, wonderful eyes, all the tortured pain, hurt and emotional wounds that he carries. And nobody nails that much pain and bone deep wounded soul as much as this man. Like nobody. And every time the camera did a close up and this drama freaking loved a close up, every oh, yeah. time close up of that beautiful face and those pained, pained eyes, a little bit of me died and fell in love with him all at the same time. And that's a magic of this show that I think people really felt for. And I think that's the closest I get to really understanding what a hold on this drama that it has for people that really love it. So that's the best. And then the worst, as Leah has already mentioned, is the heroine. And we're going to get to her more in the spoiler section, but I'm going to quote one of my favorite podcasters, right? So in a little known podcast called Afternoon the Delight, in episode 113 called Love is for Suckers, Leah said, I like to like my heroines in a drama. And yes, so this, like, that's me. So K-drama heroines are one of the main reasons I love K-drama. But in this, I, I honestly don't think I've seen, I've not seen airs. So I don't, I have not seen a sappier heroine than this. And I, I not only didn't like her, I just didn't get her. Like I didn't get her motives half the time. I didn't know what her goals was. She was super inconsistent. And she is the majority of the reason that I can't get on board with this drama. And it's not Ayu's fault. Like, I love Ayu. I love her in Manuel in Hotel de Luna. It's an amazing role. I loved her in My Mister, which is my favorite drama. Uh, uh, so it's definitely not Ayu. Although I will say that she had this, like, one expression that she used to have. And they, you know, would do one of these, like, close-ups. Like I said, they love their close-ups. And she'd just have the same expression, whether she was sad or hurt 
or feeling conflicted and it just got I, like, I think we've got to like episode 19 I was like I'm really sick of this expression that you've got on your face because like I literally don't know what it means like I have no idea what it's telling me so that's I know exactly the expression you're talking about and you are <laughs> correct so yeah for me I would say I mean Legion the hero wears a phantom of the opera mask for the first for the setup of the drama not the whole drama unfortunately I actually prefer the mask but the mask does go away later um and we do have I mean I don't know I guess I will give a tiny spoiler that if you're looking for like a just massive deformity when he takes his mask off you're not good <laughs> this is not phantom of the opera where like half his face is gone there's an artful scar <laughs> And it's, the mask is just so charismatic and like yeah if you just have like this like phantom of the opera batman kind of like broody nobody loves you and yet you're kind of like good but like misunderstood and you actually like you do have poor impulse control so you can be violent i mean you're gonna love it. and if you love like a thinky kind man that maybe you know gets led astray later on in the drama but Kong Han Yul, for me I think comes out swinging at the beginning I know you thought he was kind of boring but like I just yeah I love the different aspects of the brothers but the heroine is the the weakest link one because she time travels and it really doesn't matter so it's like, we'll get into this more in the spoiler sections, but it's like the least modern sensibilities that you could, it was basically like good for her for adapting. Yeah. It was basically like, she was like, oh, I guess I just live here now. And like, that's it. Like, no worries. Whereas like Mr. Queen, a huge, like most of the drama deals with the fact that this person has like gone back in time and has like a lot of modern acronyms and like just anachronism, sorry. And then like, also just, it's like a huge part of it because like obviously there's so much interesting things that happen if you take a modern person and put them back in time that's why time travel romances work so well there's a few things but really like eh. but I think they just wanted to have like a complete ingenue which is you know just like that kind of archetype which is like super innocent slightly unsophisticated um just kind of like that wide-eyed like like you know (laughs) And that's what she does. And they just all, like, everyone in the drama loves her for it. (laughs) Well, that's another one of my key what the fuck, right? I don't think it's too spoilery to say, but basically everybody loves her and loves her really quickly. And as I I think you're hearing from me and Leah, she kind of isn't worth all of that love, especially from this cast of brothers who are, like, hot. So... Yeah, it's a it's a head scratcher for me for that one. But IU is, I mean, like Korean beauty standards, I use like at the top of the pop. So I was like, you know, whatever. <laughs> She's cute and fun and happy. It's just like, yeah, she's real boring though. Okay, but did it make you cry? Yes, but can I caveat and say that it kind of made me feel a bit manipulated, <laughs> annoyed that I cried. I'll cover this more in the spoiler section because the part that I absolutely lost my shizzle on is a major spoiler. So did you cry? Yeah. Oh yeah. I cried many times. There's a few times that like, I think I'll always cry. Um, but yeah, I cried a lot, but I rarely cried for IU. Like I pretty much, I don't think I ever really cried for IU. I cried for other characters. All right, I want to know which bits you cried as so we'll do that in the spoiler section. <laughs> I did cry for IU at the No, I still cried for another character even at the end. <laughs> okay, so these are a few just hotter nuts that I wanted to get through. So look, I mean, we th- some of these are very softball, but I just, I can't uh, belabor them enough because they're so good. So a big black scary mask, hot or not. <laughs> totally hot, just like so hot. And actually, if you don't come out of this drama with a huge love for Lee Jung- Jung-ki, then I do think there's something a little bit wrong with you. <laughs> like, I already had, like, a great love for Lee jung like, built up from Lawless Lawyer and Flower of Evil, but um, he just puts his everything into his roles, right? He's just all in. So even when he's doing batshit stuff like beating up 50 people in the hospital as Bong San Pil in Lawless Lawyer, or he's being made to do all the batshit stuff that this drama makes him do, 
he's just all in. He's just committed and he's just so hot. Like his whole look, the side swept fringe, the mask, the black outfit, the cloak, the Gorio warrior armor, that whole extended, totally meaningless, I'm going to kill me some monks, kill Bill scene, like all of it, like totally hot, 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 hot. Hot, hot, hot. And thank you for mentioning the side swept fringe. 10 out of 10 on the hairstyle, which look, as much as I love Goblin, the Kim Shin Goryeo hair did not work very well. Like it wasn't hot. Lee Jin Gi rocks some hot Goryeo hair. He does. Which is- he just whirls around in that black cloak, like just like the saddest guy in Sad Town all the time. Yeah, which is why I feel like Kang Hong Woo kind of he cut the short straw because I feel like he had basically like a modern hairdo, but they stuck a bun on him. And yeah. that's his hair. He did, but look, that man's jaw could cut glass and he has blind <laughs> eyes. <laughs> okay, so just a few other things just to like lay it out there, you know, because as much as you are like not loving it, there's goodness here to be found. So, you know, 10 to 14 brothers naked in a steamy hot spring that also is a time travel portal (laughs) is this hot or not yeah so you know how you've been kind of selling this drama to us all this time but you never actually mentioned that it starts with a shirtless namju hook a shirtless jisoo and that kang hong gets his chest out like i i didn't know that was happening so i started this the, the drama and i was like oh my god this is just so good um, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> it's so good. I, and I, I don't even I, love like bodies. Nor, I mean, okay, wait, no, I love bodies. But I mean, like, it's not like I'm like, oh, the minute I see like some abs, I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's just like, but you put like yoldy brothers and then it's like a steamy hot spring where they're like bantering and whatever. Oh, it's just hot. Okay. And then this one, I'm curious, Kong Han Newell, hot or not? <laughs> <laughs> so for me, this is like the straightest Kung Hao Mu role I've done. Like just come back off Kung Hao Mu, back to back Kung Hao Mu, because I've just finished Kung Hao Mu in Curtain Call. Uh, and I personally admit, I prefer the goobery Northern Korean accent Kung Hao Mu to this Goryeo Kung Hao Mu, but he is still hot. And although I didn't like this drama much and I didn't like Curtain Call much either, I'm still rolling out of both of these dramas as a big Kung Hao Mu fan. And I, I think this drama really made me understand your big love for this guy because he is uh there's a lot of good Kang Hanu scenes in this drama if you're a Kang Hanu fan yeah I feel like he is um he has I mean this is a drama that has a lot of tragic figures and I feel like he is an interesting tragic figure um and I really like how he played it not sappy I don't think he plays it sappy I think that role could have become overwrought and I feel like he played it in a way that even when choices were made that I didn't like and when I wasn't actively rooting for the character I still was like man this is a good performance and I really enjoyed the I just felt like and this is where you know there is writing and there is acting and like you said like I think I use a great actress and I don't want to fault like the writing really lets her down and it's like way lots but she also is very one note in playing it I feel like he has a much more like dimensional character but I think he plays it in a very understated and great way and honestly I feel like even even as I'm talking about it it reminds me a little bit of some of the performances that we saw in I mean I don't know this seems like maybe I'm making it far-fetched but um it's okay to not be okay I'm just trying to think about like how I want to like connect the dots here for that. But like, I feel like um, Kim So Hyun, Kim Soo Hyun showed a lot of a big emotions, but kind of in a button down way a lot, often it's yeah. like crushing out. And I feel like Hong Han Newell did that a lot in his performance, which yeah. I appreciate. Okay. So. So this one's fine. I think, so we okay. spoke before about how your co-host Leah don't really like the amount of politics and historical dramas so for those people where this is also a problem how would you rate the amount of politics in this drama I mean huge (laughs) it's like (laughs) the whole drama (laughs) so is there a love story yeah the love story is like a b story though 
it's really this like jockeying for the crown because we have a king, the king who has united the three kingdoms and has founded the Goryeo dynasty. And then we have the king has had just a shit ton of sons and daughters, but you know, the sons are going to be kings. So we have a crown prince, but then we have a lot of other brothers scheming for the throne. We have mothers propping up sons, helping them scheme for the throne. And they're all like kind of good buddies. But then there's this idea of like, when someone I fight, like when daddy finally dies, you and your best bro- buddy brothers that all sit naked in the hot tub, like you're all going to fucking kill each other to get the throne. So I mean, I like that conflict. Um, what is tricky though, is that in some of the jockeying to the throne, like we have like mothers picking sons, for example, because you got to pick the horse you're going to bet on. So you're going to be like, I'm going to go with son X who I want to see take the throne. I'm not going to go with son Y. But then like, there's some real just like hatred towards like maybe the children you don't pick for no reason whatsoever. Spoiler alert, Lee Jun Gi's mommy does not love him. (laughs) And in fact, he has many emotional boo-boos. And I still don't ever really feel like we got any good sense of why she hates him so much because it wasn't like he was born deformed like he had a scar to his face because of choices she had made in hating him like his whole life basically yeah yeah that's one I thought that they might answer that question by the end of the drama but no 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 so just a blind hatred towards a son when you want because I would feel like you'd put your eggs in all your kid baskets then and you might be like, okay, I'm going to set up so-and-so because I feel like they were are better positioned, but like, I still got my fallback team here. And instead she, and it wasn't like he was the, even the youngest, he was like the middle of her sons. Cause she loved her youngest son, loved her oldest son. And then just like freaking hates her middle son for just like zero reason that we understand. Yeah. For plot device reasons, Leah. Yeah. Plot device reasons. Yes. But I honestly do not mind the jockeying for the throne in this that much, just because I like the fact that the conflict becomes this band of brother besties that become deadly enemies. And I think that that's good conflict. Like the yeah, stakes it's are interesting. High. Yeah, it's interesting because I normally, I have a high tolerance for politics. I think we spoke about this before on King's, King's Affection. And I watched The Crown Clown last year, which is just wall-to-wall politics. And I really loved it. But I don't know, for some reason for this one, every time we got in the throw room, I was like, like how you feel in a law court or how Megan feels in an operation. <laughs> like, oh God, here we are again. Like, and I, and I was trying to unpick why I didn't like it. And I think for me slightly, it's the lack of consistency with the people playing the politics. Like it, for me, it became like a plot device to move the characters to do what they wanted to do. Like people just were not, not consistent with how they were and how strategic they were. Uh, I think, Kang Hong Nu's character was probably the only one where it was like he was smart at the start and he was smart all the way through the drama and and that was consistent. But the other people, yeah, it just kind of the inconsistency drove me drove me nuts. And and also the the Mad Kings, which we can talk about in the spoiler section because yeah, I okay, okay. I mean Kings. I actually enjoy the Mad King even though it's bananas. But um, the other person who I think is really ki- well, no, the third brother is consistently bad the whole time, and you know he's bad because he wears heavy eyeliner. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to denote his evilness. <laughs> um, but the- where's the second brother then? Because there's no second brother. There's the crown prince, and then the third brother, but there's never a second brother. I think the second brother got married off, didn't he? Or was he the one that died? I mean, yeah, I'm just saying, like, he's just kind of like, they were like, we're going to jump from, like, one to three. Yeah. Like, we don't go in great order. Like, we do skip a few. <laughs> like, there's some sons that just aren't around. But yeah. um, the other character, um, the other actress who we haven't talked about that I want to give a big shout out to as the antithesis to the IU performance, and that is Kong Hana. I think mm-hmm. um, as the scheming sister, who really honestly should have just been the freaking king herself. Um, yeah. she was great and I feel like she was she was playing the game from the beginning and I feel like she always was knowing that the writing was on the wall of like it's great that you all love each other and want to like get your chests out and like sit in the hot spring together and tell jokes together but like shit's gonna be going down I'm getting ready for it early and yeah. respected that a lot yeah no she was smarter than everybody else in the drama everyone else in the drama everyone 
<laughs> and I thought was good and a bit tragic too, because what she wants comes at really painful high costs. And it was a tragedy just to see that she was so competent and probably honestly would have been a good ruler if she'd been allowed to be a ruler and wasn't just having to play like backseat politics with yeah. everyone else the whole time to try to, because she had like less influence being a woman. Okay. So is there any other non-spoiler thing that you want to get off your chest? So, um, it's actually not drama related, but I, I think I really need more Gorio now. And I need more groups of like seriously attractive actors to be brothers in a historical drama. Uh, and I know we've had them in the past, like uh, Horang and uh, Warrior Beksun, I think it's called. But it just needs to be done like now. We need to like cast some old person, have them all bathe together in a hot spring. Like this, this needs to be manifested. I agree. Okay, so we are going to pivot to the spoiler section now, and we're gonna have to do this fairly snappily, which is a tragedy, but I think we can make this work. Yes. So, um, so yes, I will weigh in where I need to, but I will also kind of like interview style you too, if that's okay. All right, so, okay, just really quickly, as we begin our, our spoiler section, where we will be talking about things, if you, if you have not seen the drama, we do recommend you see it. Even if you're like Sarah, you're no, just like see where you're going to fall out. But, you know, if you want to listen ahead, will it, will it take away from the enjoyment? I don't know. It could, it could, but I mean, he's still so freaking hot that like also no, <laughs> so, no, whatever. Okay. So if you were just like a Korean gal about town, gadding about getting broken up with her boyfriend you know, drinking some soju, feeling sad. You fell in a lake and mostly drowned and ended up back in time. Do you think that you'd be chill about it like Hey Sue was, or would you be more WTF like Mr. Queen? <laughs> so I think you've already kind of answered this like earlier about how <laughs> well Mr. Queen did it. And, and I'm not expecting that level of brilliance from this drama, but it's not even not that it doesn't even, it's completely absent. She has to be like the most unfazed time traveler ever she's gone ever. From, like what 2015 to gorio and she's like yeah no big deal uh it's like, i could just be in gorio now uh maybe the stars are a bit brighter here or like maybe if someone mentions my mum, i might get a little bit sad that my mum might be missing me but like we know nothing about the modern heisu like who is she who are her family other than that her boyfriend cheated on her with her friend which is not a spoiler like you know from the, uh, episode one like we no idea who she is and she barely attempts to return home. Like she, I think she tries once, right? And she also tries to just once talk to the astronomer Jung to see, you know, what he might know. But other than that, she's just like, okay. All in. Now. Yeah, 100% unfazed. It's bananas how unfazed she is. The, I feel like the only reason that they really, there's like, and it's like the worst plot reasons to like have her be from the future are because she's like an esthetician so she can make cute soap that <laughs> smells good or she knows how and this is where when he stops wearing his mask she puts together she makes basically like a bb cream that can cover up his scar so that he can go about without his tiny little cute scar off the corner of his eye like you know that's about it really yeah she really other than that, there was no reason. And, and the thing is, she also she. Oh, oh, okay. Actually, I'm dropping the ball. There's a huge reason, <laughs> but it's still not great. Which is, she does the big foreshadowing of plot, of course. Which is that we all know that Wong, like she knows that the fourth prince has been foretold to bring about the death of all of his brothers. So that actually is important <laughs> but like it's Plot still so weak. everything else is so weak but like her whole thing is once she realizes that Wong Su's destiny is essentially to become king and that's Lee Jun Gi's character and that he will become king through huge amounts of bloodshed with the brothers and so she thinks she can stop it and you can't stop fate <laughs> And the context she has of like all of it happening, she actually ends up making it worse. And she seems to like 
you know, a lot of it was like him reacting to other people's bad choices. It wasn't like he was like, I'm going to become king and I'm just going to freaking go hog wild and get my murder stick out and just like get murdery. It was like everyone was like making bad choices or just in wrong places at the wrong time. But she just like had a lack of like awareness in all of that the whole time and kept trying to hold him. And I think, you know, I know you want to get into this pretty soon, holding him to standards that like nobody else had to get held to. She kept being, you know, you can't kill anyone. You can't do anything. And it's like, well, dude, there's a lot of bad stuff happening. Like he's got to play the game. So, okay. So I know we've gotten into this, but I'm just going to let you just like go for it for a minute. (laughs) I'm not going to, I'm not going to disagree. Does Heisu suck as a character? And why is the answer? Yes, of course. She sucks like all of Amy's vacuums (laughs) together. (laughs) That's a lot of sucking. (laughs) Yes, because our co-host Amy, if you don't know, who's not with us today, she owns like, I don't even know, like five vacuums. She loves a vacuum. <laughs> she loves them all. Um, so yeah, like, you know, how much do I loathe thee? Oh, let me count the ways. So this this might end up being a bit of an epic round. But I, I've already said that she's not vague about being a time jump heroine, but she also, she just brings no modern women sensibilities to this drama. It's like she totally takes on a gory woman's personality and even more when she becomes a court lady she's like wetter than a soggy tissue and 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 also she's not even the person who fell in the lake like the person who fell in the lake was the one who was like I don't want to save this boy like you know surely someone else can save this boy I don't really want to you know I'm going to drink my soju and be depressed about like my my boyfriend going off with my friend but she's not even that so she's got this sappy heroine thing but it's inconsistent so like Mm -hmm. she fights the princess uh, or this other tenth prince, which could get her killed, right? If not flogged like really badly, but she does it anyway. Then she goes and runs into a forest to follow uh, Lee Jung Gi's character for no apparent reason, and that's properly dangerous because there's some people just tried to kill the king. Then she fights like ten people armed with only a stick to to protect him. <laughs> Again, no idea why. But then the rest of the drama, she wouldn't then she wouldn't say boo to a goose, and it's like who are you? I have no idea. And then at the end, I'm just like, I don't care anymore. I'm, I've kind of, I'd already given up. Die, die, hey, Sue. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, yeah, look, she saw, it's a inconsistent, messy heroine with lazy writing. And it is a wig of the finger because I think if they had locked her well, I mean, you may disagree. I think it would have made the drama freaking phenomenal. I would have given, I would have been like mad kings, mad kings. That's fine. Like, you know, <laughs> mom hates the son. Sure. She just freaking hates her. Like he just came out wrong. Like she just doesn't like him, but I would have forgiven so much if she'd had just like a little bit more. And I mean, like, look, I didn't need her to like become like Catwoman or something. I think we just talked about love between fairy and devil. That character is fairly ingenue as well. Yes. Yeah. So totally. you her she's got like a consistent POV. She's interesting. When she changes her mind, it feels like organic to the character, but like, it's not like she's just like, like, she's still kind of like a Disney princess a bit. Like, it's not like she's like totally like, you know, blow you out of the water, but like, I'm not asking for much basically. It was just, this almost felt like purposely bad. Like what, like everyone was like so invested in the fourth prince that they were like, oh shit, we got to give like the heroine something to do here. I, yeah, I think she was so much an afterthought. Um, right, my question now, love triangles. You've also mentioned that you love a love triangle and we know that Megan doesn't and we know that Amy thought she didn't, but turns out she actually does. So love triangles in this drama, like, oh my God, yes, or oh God, no. I mean, oh my God, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And like, it's not even a love triangle. It's like a love, like, power because like many of the brothers love her but really we're going to boil it down to Kang Han Newell's character who's the eighth prince who's basically the smart one and then the fourth prince who is you know the broody bad boy and those are the two brothers that really like are in with a chance on the situation and look Kang Han Newell gets me in like the Wuthering Heights kind of like had married out of responsibility and like we even get kind of like the Melanie from Gone with the Wind of like the good wife because hey Sue when she comes back like when she shows up in her body she's actually the handmaiden to the eighth prince's wife and like her cousin 
And so, and the eighth wife or the eighth prince's wife is like lovely, but her husband's never loved her. He's kind to her, but he doesn't love her. He doesn't have like passion for her. And she's sickly for kind of no reason. And she just kind of dies for no, just to die. Like, you know, she couldn't, it's not going to be a good love triangle if you're like, you know, the wife's still around, but the whole setup is essentially at the beginning, the, the, the two of them falling in love. Right. Yeah. And you even get like the wife's blessing on like her deathbed of just like, you, like, I know that you love him. And like, this is all a thing. And she's kind of like, oh, I feel bad, but like, cool. Thanks for like the permission. And you know, and I like the pivot. I think it's fun. I think it's interesting. I think it makes you think like what, you know, what makes these decisions work? Who are you going to ultimately find like the most bettable? Also, it's interesting because I think it makes the uh, Kong Han Nul character so much more tragic because he kind of chooses ultimately through being outsmarted like his family and jockeying for the throne more than his love for Jesus character and then we see the fourth prince fall into another trap where he thinks he can like outsmart fate too by like just brute strength like basically like he's got like the force of will and he'll just like murder his way to getting what he wants in his mind where we have Kong Han is going to like somehow like politically maneuver and outplay to get what he wants and both of them end up fucking failing but I find it to be very like tragically soap opera in a way that like kept me really interested so whereas Heisu was boring I felt like their kind of struggles and their longing and their pining, even if I like was whatever on the person that they were in for, I just loved them so much that it was like great for me. And yeah. so if you like love triangles, I think you would love it. If you don't love love triangles, I'm like, look, this is torture. Cause it's a huge, like it's a foundational love triangle story. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's me. So, cause I'm with Megan and I don't really like them. I always find that you end up on the right if you end up on the wrong side of the ship, and this was for me for Startup and Reply 1988, like it just sucks. Or even if you end up on the right side of the ship, but you love the other guy so much, it breaks your heart to see them so sad. You can't even be happy for the couple that you did ship. And that was like me in Reply 1994. But like for me, this drama is a whole other level of love triangle. Like we literally spent 12 episodes of her in love with, well, right, 12. Yes. Signed up for an epic romance between Lee Jong-gi and IU and thought this like wishy-washy romance with this. I mean, like we're so starved of Lee Jong-gi at the beginning of the drama because they're so focused on this. Like I just, it just took me a long time to adjust. And then- Yeah, and I loved it. it so I stuff. didn't mind. And then let's also say, I think it's the 10th Prince liked her for a while, liked her to the point that he didn't realize that he had fallen in love with his wife because he still thought he loved her. But I love that whole subplot. I thought it was great. That was a great um, subplot. And then the Jisoo surprise finish where was he the 14th prince, I believe? Yeah. I think so. Um, so that the 14th prince at the end being like the surprise ring in of like, I've always loved her too. Boom. And I was like, that one really got me. I don't know why, but like, I was like there, even like, even though like Lee Jun-gi and the fourth prince, like, that's what I think I liked about it was. I felt like, look, was it manipulating me? Yes, but like consensually, like I was consenting <laughs> to be manipulated emotionally by this. And as different people would be like, I love her too. I'd be like, oh, cause like I never cared about her but I always cared deeply about the dude. And I don't know why, I mean, like I'm not trying to hand in my feminist card. It is important for me to like a heroine. It's just like, it's also important for me to like like fantasy and have fantasy dudes. And this just felt like they kept popping out of the woodwork with these like grand gestures. And at the end when he's like nursing her, the 14th prince, like feeding her like spoonfuls of broth as she's like dying for like, you know, I mean, I was like, oh my God, like we even get this? Like, this is amazing. <laughs> Okay. And so I felt like, yeah, I just love that we just got like these surprise love. Like, yeah. So it was like a love. I don't know, because like Mr. Sunshine was like a love pentagram because everyone's kind of loving each other around the pentagram. Whereas yeah. in this, like at the top and everyone just kind of was like loving into her. So what kind of shape is that? Like a Christmas tree. And she was like, <laughs> <"Start and stop." laughs> but she deserved it because she was just amazing. And I think that ultimately I just couldn't get over 
you know, all these people loving this heroin that said I didn't deserve it. All right. So just a couple of fun ones. I we're running a bit out of time, so we're gonna have to go fast, but I do have a couple of things that I need to know. Um, one is just for pure fun. Who is a brother? Like, so taking out fourth prince, because like we've talked about him enough, yeah. go to the other brothers, who would you smash and who would you pass on? So smash Namju Hook, even though I didn't love him with Sohyun. I like them all. I even like the evil one. Oh, you didn't like him with Sohyun? See, I love that. You loved what? Oh, you loved Sohyun, did you? Oh, right. And her like tragic death. Like I was into all of that. I get it. I get it. I mean, I, yeah, I did like his character a lot. Anyway, so um, the, 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 the ninth prince, like the, the dull one that the maid fell in love with, um, he can do one. Like I'm not bothered about him at all. Yeah, I feel the same. So the ninth prince was like the boringly banal evil prince that was like the henchman to the third prince and he was boring. No, no yeah. love for him. Yeah, he could have just blah. Um, I think I would have gone for 10th prince. 10th prince was adorable. No, actually, no, 14th prince. 14th prince by the end did it for me. I <laughs> loved the 14th prince. By the end, I was like, I want to go into the redwoods and plant you and climb you daily. I loved <laughs> the fourth prince or the 14th prince. Um, so, I didn't want to smash the 10th prince, but he was, as you said, just cute. Uh, they were just like him and his wife were just puppies. And that's the bit I bawled my eyes out at too. When they, um, when they had their extended lovey dovey scene. And that was like a, that was the sign that they were just going to go and get died and, and get killed. But that scene, that look, Lee Jong Gi scene, that was, Oh yeah, it's just I was just bawling my eyes out. That was amazing. Yeah, and ugh, yeah, but yes, I thought the Fourteenth Prince was a surprise sleeper hit who came out of left field at the very end when I felt like everything was kind of like winding up in weird ways, and I was just like, oh my god, I love you. <laughs> so yeah, my butter was my butter. Okay, what was like? What do you need to like wag your finger at? Because you know you've you've mentioned all the WTFs. There've been a lot. <laughs> I think I think ultimately it's just she she supposedly like I said I signed up for the epic romance and she supposedly loved him but she didn't trust him so even at the end when she realizes that her maid has been uh, lying to her the entire drama right she's he's she this maid has killed a king with mercury poisoning uh and apparently she wants to protect all of the kings uh, and princess and this is the one that she likes the crown prince and then framed her for it which almost got her killed and then she's like oh well it's because she really loves someone and then she blames Wang So for beating her up and I'm just like what is like, wrong with you what is wrong with you I was just I think at that point I think that was the point I gave up on her because I was just like you just don't deserve to be with anyone and if you end this drama dying I will not be sad which you got what you wanted <laughs> So can we talk about what did you expect the ending to be and what do you think about it? So like I can do a sacrifice love story, right? Um, but I just don't think they did this well. Like I don't even understand why she had to leave the palace. Like, right? was it to save him? Was it to make him a better king? Was it because she felt suffocated and she couldn't be by herself, even though she spent the whole time just carving Lee Jung Gi's bad mask onto stones? Or is it the secret baby? Because obviously this is such a fucking soap opera of a drama that we've chucked that one in right at the end as well. well here, I, let me tell know. you, so I think she left because he, the maid died, which again, like who gives it? Like she was bad. The maid was real bad. So I think that it was um, the maid dying. It was him married to his sister. <laughs> it was... But really, like, I even feel like she could have been cool with him married to his sister. Like, I really feel like it was, um, it was him killing the maid. Just, like, got her. She was like, I'm done. That's it. I'm out. And it was like, well, dude, like, the maid was, like, going, like, yes, the maid had made bad choices. And, like, okay, you feel kind of sorry for her. And, like, didn't she get rolled up and beaten? Like, the, you know, it's like, it wasn't a good death. No. But like it was a Gorio death. Yeah, it was a Gorio death. And like, I mean, like you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Yeah. Um, but she was like, she was like my sister. I'm like, yeah, and she was plotting to kill you and like everyone else. And like exact, exactly why I gave up yeah, that. So she ran away, died of a broken heart, slash having a baby. Yeah. And yeah. then he 
did like the like the worst, which is like went to spy through the trees and then like sees her like laughing with Jisoo and is like she's happy and like runs back flailing to the castle. I just the whole like misunderstanding communication plot device to keep them apart is also that I mean that whole thing with the letters that he didn't read and then he reads them too late and then by this point I'm just like seriously this is what's going to keep them apart like I you know I was done I know lots of people found that sad but I was just like this is just plot device after plot device and I'm I'm just I'm yeah I'm done yeah I agree um I think that that was all dumb but at that point I was also so freaking taken with Jisoo, like in the 14th Prince that, and look, in real life, Jisoo has done some bad things, has been shipped off to the military. I don't condone real life, but like that character who I saw, I really like that character. And so I was really happy with that character. So I was even willing to be like, whatever, I don't really care. So you're, you're, uh, what are your feelings about the ending, the actual ending ending? I was like WTFness on the fact. So the very end is she dies. He's realized she's somehow like not from the future. She comes back, wakes up in the future, has amnesia, then sees a portrait of Wong So at the like gallery, like the historical gallery, and is like, remembers everything and cries because she like remembers everything. And it's like, oh my God, like, damn this happened and then like you see him like I will find her and you're like "Woo, what's gonna happen and then like that's it so I like it because is it like an I mean I don't like it but I like it because I feel like if that had been like I felt like it gave you where in your mind if you didn't want it to be over it didn't have to be over because I was like if anyone's gonna like march through time and find her it's gonna be Wong So could he have marched down the street and just like had a conversation when she was still alive in the Goryeo yes but when we've gotten his hot ass face making this vow with like the eclipse overhead and like the blood red sky, we would not. And I was like, <laughs> I like the intense, like, I will find you through time. Like it was like Gary Oldman from like Dracula, like the Bram Stoker's Dracula like in the 90s. Like I have crossed oceans of time to find you. Like when he shows up in England, like I gave me like the like Dracula vibes. And I was like, fine so apparently there is allegedly an epilogue that exists I don't know if you know this no so the fun fact is there is an epilogue that has never been shown and it's of her walking I think to step out onto the street and somebody puts the umbrella over her head and she looks up and it's him in modern or in modern um interesting this would have been a great ending for me because i yeah. liked it yeah but i was willing to take the bat shit like i will find you enough because i was like look it means that like you can close it out being like holy shit but like it's not a happily ever after it's not a happy for now but i don't feel like it was just like she died and bounced back and that was it either where mr yeah. queen, like mr queen i don't know like i guess i'm gonna have some here's a little spoiler for Mr. Queen at the end like when he's back he's back and I didn't yeah. feel like there was a promise that like the you know like that was it like that his story had ended there yeah. and in this one I felt like the door was left open and I did appreciate that a little bit I I think for me I just wanted one shot of Lee Jung-gi in the modern world doing his determined scary eye like I'm gonna find this woman yes. like I, I mean, just would have been that. so much better like that one shot that's all I want but yeah no somebody else said that because this is based off a Chinese drama right so uh, the Chinese drama had like a second series where they were in modern times and apparently the expectation was that they would then do a modern version of this but then scheduling conflicts blah 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 so that didn't happen that's what one person said to me so I don't know if that was ever the case and that's why we ended up with sending but I was kind of, as you know, meh by this point. So like, it didn't bother me that much, this ending. I don't know if we needed a whole other season. I think we just needed, I would have liked some closure, but like, this is probably one of the only times where we've had no real closure, but I felt like it was so kind of like baller enough that I was like, meh, like good. And like, once I got over the shock the first time of like, whoa, that's how it ends. Yeah, I love his face and I love the blood red sky and the whole thing. And the other thing that we never talked about, which like, honestly, I probably give like 
80% of my love for the drama for, I feel very shallow in this. <laughs> when she's on her knees to the king and she does like, because like basically also I use characters in like the pain Olympics all the time. Like she's always suffering for someone. Yeah. She does her like knee, whatever plea. And she's like there in the courtyard on her knees trying to get him to like change his mind over, was this killing, um, was this the one that would like, he was going to kill her boss? Yes. Who was, who was his- Lady O, yeah. yeah. Lady O, who was actually his true love. Yeah. Um. So anyway, the king, the king for reasons was going to be uh, killing <laughs> his one true love because she was going to die anyway as she conveniently shared. So she's like, you might as well just kill me because of a whole bunch of political reasons. And anyway, Haisu had no idea what was happening. Haisu had no idea what was happening behind the scenes and was just like, this lady can't be killed. So she, because oh, it was because they framed her for murder. Like they were saying she had attempted to murder someone then like, you know, her friend Lady O was like, I'll pretend like I pretended to murder even though it was always the queen. And I'm making it sound confusing it's not basically bad people wanted to do murder and frame good people for it. Yeah. And so IU thinks she can get justice by doing this like whole plea to the king where she gets on her knees and sits for, I don't even know, long enough that like she, her lips look real chapped. She got real pale. <laughs> I'm assuming days had passed by. And this is when we start to see that the eighth prince is a real weenie at his heart. Cause like, you know, Kong Han Will's character is not going to go intercede and like, anger his papa for this he's willing to let the love of his life sit there and like basically die in the square but Lee Jin Gi that's when we know he's hero material because he strides out with his side sweat bang with his you know mask and she's in the rain all in white she is white as a ghost and he does the iconic that everyone knows of like taking the cloak and putting it over her and I mean <laughs> It's just so good. So uh, it's makes me laugh because like, you know, we all just get hit in different ways. And Megan and Amy have been watching um, Crash. We've all been watching Crash Landing on You. And I enjoy Crash Landing on You a lot, but we've been rewatching it. And I won't get into it too much because we're going to do a whole pod on it. But I will say that like, it didn't hit me as hard in the feels the second time, unlike the two of them. Whereas mm-hmm. this, watch him put that cloak over her. And I don't even care about her really. And I'm like <laughs> dead. It is an iconic scene. It is a really powerfully iconic scene. I did love it. And I liked how you get to see like, yeah, that's when like the love triangle really takes that shift of like the good brother really is just like, I can't like, you know, cross my father and I'm just going to stand here and like watch from the shadows. And from then on, he's basically like out of the game, trying his best to still think he's a player in the game, but he's done. And he's always just kind of lurking around after that. Yeah. With his little bun. (laughs) <laughs> and his hot dog. <laughs> his big mouth. Oh my God. But yeah, I think, so this is the thing is like, why do I like it? I know it's a mess. I know it's got a ton of plot holes. It doesn't have a satisfying ending. Yet I love characters and I love enough of, even if they're like still underdeveloped-ish, I loved enough of the brother characters and the scheming sister and like, you know, Lady O and the astrologer, like I liked enough of the characters that I'm willing to be like, you know what? This is just like a fun ride. And like, much like how Tale of the Nine Tale by the end, I'm like, this drama is a mess. And I'm just like really enjoying what a mess it is. And it's fine. I kind of feel like that with Moon Lovers too, where by the end, like, I was just like, sure, like whatever. <laughs> And so, you know, am I a hypocrite if like you hear me like chastise another like plot hole and like another drama? Sure. <laughs> but what? Like when you have a character that makes you want to crawl up a wall, like you want to put your back against the wall and then like crawl up that wall with like frustrated desire, you just got to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you know what? I, I love that this drama makes you feel that way. Genuinely, I do. And I really wish it made me feel that way too. But sadly, no. 
But where we do have alignment and where hopefully we will be reconnecting soon is our shared love for love between fairy and devil because he is also a character that made me want to climb up a wall and more so. This, so I love that show. Uh, like that's in my top five for sure. Whereas yeah. Moon Lovers is like my guilty pleasure that I, that's not really guilty pleasure because I don't apologize for it, but it's just like, it's my crack. It's my crack. And I, I know it's problematic. I know it's a mess, but it will always be my crack and I will watch it repeatedly forever. But Love Between Fairy and Devil like got me in the feels. It took away my entire life. And I love that hero so much. So much. And um, yeah. And I was I was hoping that I'd finish this podcast still your friend so that I can come and do that guest. <laughs> I could be guest host. Yeah. You know what would have made Love and Fairy and Devil better is if he had, if his brother was a hotter brother and if there was uh, more hot brothers. And I would have loved that better. It does have a love triangle. It's an okay love triangle. I like the painful love triangles so much. You do. You do. I I preferred the not really very much of a love triangle, love triangle that was in Love Between the Fairy and Devil. Like there's just no competition between Chang Hong and Dong Fang Ching Chang, where it's just, yeah, none. And that's the way I like my love triangles, like semi-boiled. Yeah, no, I much prefer to be like, who would you pick? Who would you pick? I don't know who I'd pick. And then like, you know, every once in a while, then like one of them will like F up and you'll be like, okay, get why. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. It was a fun ride. I still feel like your friend. I just feel like I can't fight with you on it because. I don't think you're wrong. It's a head heart thing, Leah, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's yeah, no- and so I have to respect it. Like you didn't come at me with something that I can like yell at you for, like Mr. Queen, where I get mad because like <laughs> it is, it's head heart. And I know my head knows what a mess it is, but my heart's just like, <laughs> it's fine. And I think there's, and so I think that would be my request to anyone listening is write in to us either on Instagram at Afternoon of Delight podcast or on email at Afternoon of Delight podcast at gmail.com like what's a drama that you think this is a mess and I just love it yeah because little women I think you know it was a bit of a mess I liked it enough but like it didn't have three to four pining hot brothers that like got me by the heart so I was like I like it but like I was also like Mer-, like you know I liked it a lot this was great but I like moved on with my life whereas this I think I'll always come back to like these characters that I'm just like, oh God, I love you. Yeah. Yeah, I feel that for you. I'm happy. You have, a, you have one like this? Well, I don't think I've got I've got ones that like they I love them more than perhaps they deserve to be loved, but not one that has me by the heart the way it does you. So it's a good conundrum. I'm gonna go away and have a think about that one actually. Yeah, love it. And I mean, look, the other thing, it just hit me like I'm trash for a mask. I am trash for emotional boo-boos and like Sundari characters. I am trash for pining. I am also weirdly trash for a hot springs, like a good natural hot springs. And I was just like, look, you're just, I'm a trash for an eclipse. Like it just hit like all these little things that I love, even if it didn't do it particularly well, there's not many dramas that would have those things. It's true. What's brothers all in love with the same person? Yes. So, I mean, like, there's not much out there. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, at least this drama highlighted all of these, you know, seemingly quite random things that you absolutely love. All wrapped Now that I say this, it's 2023. I'm like, what do I do? Do I just turn around and write a romance that has, you know, hot springs and brothers and love triangles and maybe just like a slightly less bad heroine and see what happens? Maybe that's my destiny. And maybe I'm just like, <laughs> act what I meant to do for the year. I don't know. <laughs> yeah so that right you need to go right yes and so you will not be watching this again is that correct I will not be re-watching this drama although I mean I, I seriously like I said I read I recommend it to anyone who has not seen it just to see where you fall on this line because it is a it's a, it's a drama that's adored by so many people like so many people and so obviously it has a magic for for lots of people out there it just wasn't wasn't for me sadly All right. Well, thank you for this conversation. And I look forward to connecting very soon. Yay. Annyeong. Annyeong. 감사합니다. 
Thank you for listening to Afternoon of Delight. Where can you find us outside the pod? Head on over to afternoonadelight.com. That's A-F-T-E-R-N-O-O-N-A-D-E-L-I-G-H-T dot com. You'll find links to all our social media, our book recs, K-pop and K-skincare recs, and if you want even more Afternoon of Delight, because really who doesn't, you can join our Patreon, where you can choose the patron level that's right for you. Join in daily K-drama conversations, listen to bonus podcast episodes just for patrons, and participate in our monthly live K-drama support group via Zoom. We can't wait for you to be a part of the community. Until next time, annyeong!